ion thrusters. They may sound like science fiction, but they are very much a reality. These incredibly complex machines can propel spacecraft across the solar system using only electricity. But how does the gridded ion thruster work? Well, you're about to find out in five easy steps. Step one, ion acceleration. An ion is a positively charged atom. Positive things are attracted to negative things through the electrostatic force. Gridded ion thrusters use a negatively charged accelerator grid to attract positive ions from inside the discharge chamber. The ions then leave the thruster at speeds of up to 50 kilometers per second, over 100 times faster than a bullet. And for the same reason that firing a bullet produces kickback in the opposite direction, firing ions at these enormous speeds produces thrust in the opposite direction. But how are the ions created in the first place? Well, atoms are neutral, but if you remove an electron, it becomes positive. It turns into an ion. To do this, electrons are fired from an electron gun called a hollow cathode and are attracted toward the positive walls. Meanwhile, xenon atoms are released into the discharge chamber. On their journey to the walls, the electrons hit the xenon atoms with so much force that it knocks off one of its electrons. The xenon atoms turn into ions. But how can we increase the number of collisions and hence the number of ions? Well, we create an electron tornado. Magnetic fields make electrons spin in a circle. But if you make the magnetic field stronger at both ends, you can trap the electrons in a never-ending spiral. But why is this useful? Well, by placing magnetic traps at the walls, we create mini electron tornadoes. This greatly increases the number of collisions with xenon atoms, hence producing even more thrust. But there's a problem with our thruster. The speed of the ions are so large that when they collide with the accelerator grid, it quickly begins to wear away until there's no accelerator grid left. The solution is to use ion optics. In the same way that optics can focus light, we can use ion optics to focus our beam through the grid rather than into it. A second positively charged grid called the screen grid is placed in front of the accelerator grid. The screen grid repels the ions, focusing them through the accelerator grid and preventing damage. But there's one final issue. As positive ions leave, a negative charge builds up on the thruster. Eventually, the negative charge pulls the positive ions back until they can't leave at all. And if the ions can't leave, then we have no thrust. The solution is to neutralize the beam. A second hollow cathode fires electrons into the ion beam. The negative electrons then recombine with the positive ions and form back into neutral atoms. This means that overall, no charge is lost from the thruster and charge buildup is prevented. So to summarize, positive ions are attracted to the accelerator grid and fired into space. Ions are created by firing electrons at xenon atoms. Ionization is increased by creating electron tornadoes at the walls. Ion optics shield the grid from damage. And finally, the beam is neutralized by an external hollow cathode, which prevents charge buildup. There are, however, two drawbacks to gridded ion thrusters. The biggest is the low thrust. A traditional chemical rocket can produce up to 2 million newtons of thrust, about the weight of a blue whale. But a gridded ion thruster produces a maximum thrust of 300 millinewtons, about the weight of an egg. This means that a mission that may only take a chemical rocket five hours may take more than five months for a gridded ion thruster, albeit using much less propellant. The second issue is grid erosion. Even using ion optics, grid erosion is unavoidable, and it limits a gridded ion thruster to about three and a half years of continuous use. But please watch the next video on the Hall Effect thruster to see how these two issues are addressed.